Hi, hello, welcome to Telesur in English. I am Janet, it's a pleasure, let's begin. While the chair of the Congress is sworn in as a president. On Monday, U.S. Attorney General William Barr authorized an investigation of alleged voting irregularities before the 2020 presidential elections is officially certified. Jordanians vote Tuesday in a parliamentary election overshadowed by the coronavirus pandemic. Peru's Congress leader Manuel Merino received Tuesday the presidential sash as he takes over the presidential functions until the end of the current term in July 2021. Merino swore in, in as the third president since 2016, came after an impeachment trial that outset former president Martin Vizcarra over corruption allegations. Vizcarra is accused of taking bribes from developers while serving as a regional governor in 2014. President Merino called for national unity and promised that he will leave office on July 28, 2021. Merino also criticized the previous president's handling of the pandemic, saying that Peru is a country with the worst handling of COVID-19. The country reports over 920,000 infections and nearly 35,000 deaths. Peru has the world's higher per capita COVID-19 mortality rate. Demonstrations continue in Peru after the Congress passed the destitution motions against President Martin Vizcarra. Hundreds of people in Lima took the surrender of Plaza San Martin after the Congress removed Vizcarra from the presidency due to permanent moral disability. On Monday night, the Congress passed to the motion with 105 votes. The demonstrations in the capital have been repressed by the state security force. Today, Manuel Merino assumed the presidency of the government as an interim president until the next elections. Vizcarra was sick for permanent moral disability after a corruption scandal was uncovered due to irregular concessions when he was governor of the province of Moquegua. People from all over the country gathered to protest against the removal of Martin Vizcarra. Demonstrators claim that their protests are not in defense of Vizcarra, but for the democracy which is under threat by the Congress. This Tuesday, more than 500 people, mostly students, march against the Vizcarra removal. Another subject on Monday, U.S. Attorney General William Barr authorized federal prosecutor nationwide to investigate allegations of voting irregularities before the 2020 presidential elections is officially certified. The measure comes day after the mainstream U.S. media announced the victory of Democrat Joe Biden over President Donald Trump after the vote count was complete. This opened the possibility that the current president will use this to try to challenge the election results. The AG's decision has already led to resignations of some members of his staff, such as the head of the Electoral Fraud Division, Richard Pilger. The Attorney General distanced himself from Trump's conspiracy theories, stressing that investigations will be carried out if there are substantial evidence. We continue in the United States where, according to a new survey, 70% of Republicans do not believe the presidential election was free and fair, even though multiple news outlets have called it for Joe Biden. Donald Trump and his supporters continue to allege such problems without offering any substantial evidence whatsoever. Meanwhile, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said that Donald Trump will remain in power for a second term. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. All right, we're, we're ready. The, the world is watching what's taking place here. We're going to count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. A week after losing the U.S. elections, President Donald Trump remained shut up in the White House on Tuesday, pushing an alternative reality that he is about to win and blocking Democrat Joe Biden's ability to prepare the transition. We will win, the Republican president tweeted. 
The message referred to Trump's unprecedented decision for a U.S. president to dispute the lost elections, refusing to concede to his opponent and mounting a string of flimsy court challenge in states where Biden won. Meanwhile, workers have started to build a platform outside the U.S. Capitol that will be used for the scheduled inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden in a little over two months' time. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has informed in a tweet that he has spoken with the U.S. President-elect Joe Biden and congratulated the Democrat on the hi his victory in the elections, despite the fact that Donald Trump has yet to concede defeat and Johnson has been quite close with the Republican. Johnson told Biden he looked forward to strengthen the partnership between the U.K. and the U.S. Also, French President Emmanuel Macron congratulates U.S. President-elect Joe Biden by phone following his election wins. Like most other European leaders, the French president has congratulated him on Saturday and called him to act together to overcome current challenges. Et parfois agir directement. C'est d'ailleurs pourquoi la France. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris has uh, given address commending the latest attempt by Republicans' right-wing ideology to strike down the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, in the latest case before the Supreme Court. In the middle of a deadly pandemic that's affecting more than 10 million Americans, these ideologies are once again trying to strip health coverage away from the American people, say the president-elect. The Supreme Court hears arguments in a case that could see the health care law dismantled. The suite brought by 18 Republican states aims to rule the law unconstitutional. The signature health care reform law that extends health care coverage to millions of Americans. According to Urban Institute, in tank, over 20 million Americans could lose their health care coverage if Obamacare is overturned. We continue in Chile, where health workers were tackled by police during a demonstration outside the Ministry of Health. With the use of water launching cars, the police contained the protest made this Tuesday by health personnel union in front of the Ministry of Headquarters in the capital, Santiago. According to local media, three people were detained. Demonstrators demand better salaries to Sebastián Piñera's government, arguing that they are the frontline workers fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Chile is so far the seventh country most affected by the new coronavirus in America and after recording 4,000 deaths. 57 people have died and eight are missing in Honduras following tropical storm ETA, authorities say Monday, as the death toll double in one of the countries worst hit by the storm. Honduras was one of the worst affected with swatens in the country now underwater and authorities having reported 23 deaths on Sunday. ETA slammed into Central America last week as a Category 4 hurricane leaving over 200 people across the region dead or missing. Two major rivers overflowed in Honduras, Sula's Bailey's economy, Heartland, causing widespread flowing and trapping tens of thousands of people. The U.S. National Hurricane Center tweeted that tropical storm ETA had uh, become the 19th event to be named this season, beating the previous record of 28 in 2005. The year Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. The center was even forced to switch to the Greek alphabet after 2020's storm exhausted its list of Latin names. In El Salvador, Judge Jorge Guzman of the San Francisco Gotera Investigative Court asked Sunday the General Prosecutor's Office to initiate an investigation of President Bukele and Defense Minister René Merino regarding the massacre of El Mozote case. As the amnesty law was repeated in 2016, the struggle to reopen the investigation of the military massacre in December 1981 in El Mozote and surrounding cantons began. 
According to the judge, the armed force of El Salvador, backed by Bukele and Marino, obstructed a series of program inspections of the archive of different military units, alleging that the required documentation was destroyed in the last 40 years. Human rights organizations denounced the incident and questioned the current government's true commitment to the victims or the armed conflict. The Public Prosecutor's Office of the Republic is now required to launch a criminal investigation against President Najim Bukalele, his defense minister Francisco Marino, and the officials who impeded the inspection of military archives in the El Mozote case, because it is evident to us that the private prosecutors committed crimes, such as arbitrary acts, failure to comply with their duties, disobedience, and cover-ups. The Attorney General's Office of El Salvador searched Monday for the Ministry of Health and Finance looking for documents related to the purchase of health supplies in an irregular manner during the COVID-19 pandemic. Germán Arriaza, director of the Anti-Corruption Unit of the Public Prosecutor's Office, said that authorities have so far carried out 20 raids. Among the complaints are the purchase of non-certified masks at a 65% overprice and the payment of 1.3 million US dollars for 1 million of this item manufacturer in Guatemala. Francisco Alavi, Salvador's health minister, was also accused of authorizing the purchase of rubber boots for $225,000 from a company owned by a family member. And finally, the deliver of $300 to 100,000 people without detailing the criteria for selecting the beneficiaries of this aid. Jordanians vote Tuesday in a parliamentary election overshadowed by the coronavirus pandemic, which has dealt a heavy blow to the Arab countries already debt riding economy. More than 50,000 security force were on hand to ensure masks were worn inside polling station and social distancing maintained. Authorities ruled that the four yearly elections should go ahead, but voters who have tested positive for the novel coronavirus face it up to a year impression if they ignore instructions to stay home. As of the F of polling day, the kingdom has confirmed around 150,000 infections and 1,200 deaths. My demands are many, unemployment, the youth, the overall financial situation of the people, orphans, widows, unemployed youth, all these need solutions. This voting is a national duty that the government calls for, and we support that and feel pride in voting and fulfilling our electoral role. Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Stayed mourned the loss of Saev Erekat, who died at the age of 65 from COVID-19 complications after weeks of hospitalization. Erekat was the Palestinian veteran negotiator and politician who shared relations with world's powers for decades. The departure of the friend and courageous brother, Dr. Saev Erekat, represents a great loss to Palestine and to our people. We feel deeply saddened by his loss, especially in light of these difficult circumstances facing our Palestinian cause. Our people will remember the great late Dr. Saeb Erekat, the righteous son of Palestine who stood at the forefront defending the causes of his homeland and his people in the fields of work and the national struggle and in the international arena. The UN lead peace talks on Libya resumed for a second day in Ramad, near the Tunisian capital Tunis. The United Nations is hosting talks on Libya in its latest push to end almost a decade of violence in the North American country. This week's talks aim to unify Libya's leaders, a single interim executive, and pave the way to national elections. It will also be providing service to Libyans facing desperate economy times and a coronavirus outbreak that has killed over 900 people. Delegates are tasked with appointing a three-member presidency council representing Libya's three historical regions and a prime minister to lead a separate government of national unite.
Mali's former president, Amado Tumani Toure, has died in Turkish, age 72, a family member and a doctor said on Tuesday. Tumani led the Sahel nation for a decade before being outset in a cop. Tumani Toure died in Turkey, where he had been taken for health reasons, his nephew Omar Toure told. A hospital doctor in Bamako said the former leader had recently undergone her surgery. He won presidential elections in 2002 and 2007, but he was overthrown in 2012 by soldiers who accused him of failing in support their battles against both Tuareg rebels and jihadist insurgents. In Lebanon, the Higher Defense Council convened Tuesday at the Baabda Presidential Palace in the presence of caretaker Prime Minister Hassan Diab, as well as caretaker Minister of Defense, Justice, Interior, Economy, Finance, Public Health and Public Works, approving a two-week total lockdown over the coronavirus concerns. Diab ordered the security force to be strict in the implementation of the lockdown across all the Lebanese territories, calling on the citizens to assume their responsibilities in his regard. Also announced monthly subsidies to be distributed over 240,000 Lebanese families. Lebanon has witnessed a sharp increase in the coronavirus case with over 95,000 cases and 732 deaths. Tokyo Olympic organizers said news of a coronavirus vaccine was a relief on Tuesday, but insisted their biologic security planning for the postponed games remained unchanged. Olympic officials have regularly said that a coronavirus vaccine is not a precondition for staying the games, now scheduled to open a year late in July 2021. The organizing committee is not disconnected from society. We are fully working within it, and in that sense we are feeling the same as you probably felt, positive sentiment and relief. Ultimately, the Olympics and Paralympics are an accumulation of competitions day by day in each venue. So the fact that we have recently managed to organize a gymnastics competition in a safe manner in a still uncertain context amid the coronavirus sends a strong message. We have come to the end of this news brief. These and many other stories, you can find them in our website telesurtv.net slash English. Join us in social media, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I am Janet Perez Moya. It's a pleasure.